Hello Facebook, DJ Rachel here with another video. As promised, today I'm going to be doing a short tutorial on the chroma key feature within OBS. I had several of you reach out to me asking me how you can get this awesome feature at home. So I'm going to break down the software a little bit, go through some of the minute settings to get chroma key to work and give you um, a quick and easy video on how to get up and running as soon as possible. For those of you that don't know what OBS is, it stands for Open broadcast software. This is a free program. Yes, I said free program available for download by simply opening up your web browser, typing in those three letters, and the first link that shows up is going to be the one that you're going to want to click. I promise it is not a virus. Your computer isn't going to blow up. It is a legitimate free program that works fantastic. For those of you who are looking to have a better understanding of OBS, this is not the video for you. Today, I am specifically focusing on the Chroma Key feature. I may be reviewing some of the basic fundamentals of the software, but if you really want a better understanding, you're going to have to go look at a couple other videos at YouTube before coming to my tutorial. The other thing that I wanted to go over was some of the equipment that I'm using to make the video that you're seeing now possible. Right now, I have everything hooked up to my Denon MCX 8000. This is pretty much acting like a mixing board in which I have my lavalier microphone going into and the music that you hear in the background. You may notice, no doubt, spiderwebs playing. And by using my controller, I'm able to adjust the gain and the volumes on both the microphone and the music that you are hearing. From the Denon controller, I am going into the iRig 2. I did do a video on the iRig 2. It is a musical interface that allows you to directly connect audio devices and put it into um, any input that you're looking for. It is an awesome, awesome unit. It is available at any guitar center. Again, I think I paid $40 for it. If you're interested more in the device, I will post the comment about the iRig 2 in the comments below this video um, so you can look into that as well. So in essence, everything is going from the Denon controller to the iRig 2 and then from the iRig 2 into my laptop computer into the microphone jack. And that is how you're able to hear the music and my microphone. I also uh, purchased an additional webcam. The webcam that came on my laptop computer is really inferior and had super poor uh, quality. So I went ahead and got an HD camera, which is why I'm able to look so crisp and vibrant um, because I'm using a high quality camera. If you're looking to delve into chroma key, um, getting a high quality webcam would really be the first place to start um, because if you're not operating with a good camera, regardless of what you're doing in the back, nothing else is going to look good. You may also notice that there is still some slight distortion with this video. I still am waiting on my um, lighting in order to do better quality chroma key videos. Right now, I'm literally just operating off of a lamp and an overhead light um, to give you some of the uh, illumination that you see here, but it is not the appropriate lighting that I would need in order to make this the best quality video possible. So before we get started, I just wanted to point out that when I get to the software portion of this tutorial, you're going to notice that obviously I have things already set up. This is necessary so that you can hear and see what I'm doing. If I started from a blank slate, this video wouldn't be possible. So in essence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the features that you would need to add, but then I'm going to have to remove them so that it doesn't interfere with the settings that I already have set up. That is the best way that I'm going to have to do this. So let's Let's get started. So you're going to notice that I already have the chroma key activated. Um, in order for you to see what I'm doing, I'm going to deactivate the chroma key and you're going to be directed to a shot of my desktop. This is how OBS works. It allows you to make videos with certain layers and you can remove and add layers at any time in real time. So right now, um, you can see this text. If I deactivate it, the text goes away and I can add it with the click of a mouse. The image that you're seeing for my chroma key is here. With the click of a mouse, it can go away and I can put it back again. So this is how OBS works. It makes different layers um, that you can pick and choose what you want your viewer to see. It's really neat. You can get as creative with this as you want. You can add multiple camera inputs. So for the DJs watching this, you can have a camera focused on your controller and people can watch you mix 
facing, then you can have an additional camera, you know, up at the top so they can see your facial expressions and you can give some of your viewers eye contact. You can add your DJ logo, you can add backgrounds, um, you can go crazy with the software. So I really encourage you to have as much fun with this as possible. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna hide my text to kind of clean everything up for you. Um, it's all gonna start in the bottom corner over here under the scenes column. This is where you're going to start organizing your different sources. In order to create a scene and start fresh, you're simply gonna have to right click the mouse and click add. You can also simply just click the plus sign here. They both do the same thing. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna simply type in demo. Now, as soon as I hit okay, it's, the screen is going to go black and here's why. You'll notice that I already have a scene technically created and associated with that scene, I have a bunch of different sources. I have my video input, which is the webcam you're seeing. Um, I had the image, which was the Spider-Man that you saw before and now the desktop that you're viewing, that is all listed under these sources. As soon as I hit okay, it's gonna create a new scene, but because I haven't added any sources to it, there's nothing for the program to recognize. So just for demonstration purposes, I will hit um, okay and I'm going to stick with the scene that I already have created, but that's how you would start with a scene, okay? So now once you have your scene created, you're gonna have to add the sources to it. Again, this is what you're telling OBS to show your viewers. So the first one that I recommend uh, setting up is going to be your video capture device, also known as your webcam. So again, you simply hit the plus sign, click video capture device. It's gonna pull up in a separate box. As soon as I hit OK, you're going to notice that it's pulling up actually a different camera. The camera that you're seeing in this box over here is the webcam that is on my laptop computer. The first camera that you're seeing is the webcam that I purchased that had the better quality. Um, here is where you can tell OBS which uh, camera you want to view. So because I want to add an additional camera, I'm going to click on um, the one that's associated with my laptop computer and simply hit OK. Now you're going to notice that I can move this around anywhere I want. I can also make this as small or as big as I need. Again, get as creative as you want with this. You'll also notice the green background in this camera. This is because I haven't added the filter to that camera. Right now, all you're seeing is the basic camera function. If I wanted to add the chroma key feature to this, I would have to add the filter to it. This is why on this camera, you see my desktop background because I've added that filter. And on this camera, you just see the green blanket behind you because I haven't added anything to it. So I just wanted you to see what it looks like when you don't have the chroma key uh, filter enabled with the camera. So again, to keep things um, from getting confusing and messing, messy, I'm just going to remove this camera, okay, and just use the one that I am currently operating off of. So once you have your camera set up, now you have to find an image to put over the green background. Um, so in order to do this, again, you're simply going to come down to the plus sign, add a source, and add an image. Once you click image, another dialog box is going to come up. I'm going to click OK, and now I have to tell OBS where to find the photo. So I'm simply going to click Browse. It's going to bring up pictures. I got these pictures, again, off of Google, saved them to my desktop, and now they're ready available to use in OBS. Just so I don't get things confusing, I'm not actually going to hit Open, but all you would simply do is click the picture you wanted, hit Open. It would show up right here. You would click OK, and then you would have that picture available to use um, over your Chroma Key feature. So now I'm going to show you how to apply the chroma key filter. So now that you have your camera set up and you have the image you want to use, now you have to find a way to get the camera and the image to kind of blend together to give you the results that you're looking for. As I said, the chroma key is considered a filter on the camera. So in order to do this, I am simply going to go back to my camera, right click and add a filter. Now when you pull this up, there should be nothing here in this dialog box, um, but you're going to have to click the plus sign 
click the chroma key function and then it's going to allow you to apply that filter to the camera that we just selected. You'll notice that I have a nice solid gray background. This is what you're going for. Once you enable the chroma key feature, it's going to give you um, some fine settings to kind of filter through to give you the best look possible. You'll notice the more I reduce the chroma key feature, the more solid my green background is going to be. The more I apply, the more grayed out the background becomes and it applies the, the filter that I was looking for. However, if you go too much with this, you'll notice that I start to disappear as well. This is because skin and hair also has um, a green uh, tint to it. So if you go too much with the chroma key feature, you're just going to blend yourself into the background. So this is where you really have to play around with it. Just because these settings work for my camera and my lighting doesn't mean they're going to work for you at home. This took a lot of finesse um, to kind of get the, the clarity that I was looking for. You'll also notice that this smoothness feature is also down here. This allows you to kind of feather um, around the person's head and body to really give them a super crisp look. But again, a lot of this is reliant on the type of lighting that you have. So you're going to have to kind of fuss with this to see what works for you and, um, you know, play around with it so that everything looks how you want it to. After you have it set, you simply hit close and now you now you're able to use your chroma key setting. The last thing that I want to mention with these sources and the whole concept of layers Layers mean things on top of one another. There may be a time where you want someone to see something, but for whatever reason, it isn't showing up. And this is because you may have it too low on the list. These arrows allow you to give these sources a certain priority and tell OBS what is to be on top of what. So obviously, if you have... Um, let me think of an example here. So the text here is coming up, but let's just say um, I wanted to move it lower on the list. Eventually it would disappear because my screen capture is now covering the text. So you just have to be mindful of that. But all of this is about telling it what you want your viewers to see. And again, you have complete control over all these features. So I hope this video was very helpful. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions about the chroma key feature within OBS. There are a ton of other videos on YouTube if you feel that this didn't provide you all the information you were looking for, but I look forward to everyone having a great time with this program and seeing some really awesome videos out there. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for checking out my video and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.